Hi everybody, it's 314 React here. Today we're going to be looking into how to get reshade ray tracing on Halo 3 ODST, which released just the other day. You can get it on Steam and on the Microsoft Store. The first thing you want to do is go to reshade.me and download the very latest version, which as of the 23rd of September 2020 is 470. Download that and put it on your desktop or somewhere easily accessible. Then you want to go into the description and you want to go to the link there, which will take you to instructions on how to sign up for Mike McFly's Patreon, which will take you to their Discord, where you'll be able to download the Ray Tracing Global Illumination Shader. Once you have both of those files, you open up the Reshade Setup 470. You click here to select a game and manage its Reshade installation. You hit Browse and then you want to give it the location of the Master Chief main binary. So for me, it's under Steam, Steam Apps Common, Halo the Master Chief Collection, MCC Binaries, Win64, and then you want to select the MCC Win64 Shipping EXE. Hit OK on that. I've already got it installed, so I'm going to hit Update. It should automatically detect what version of DirectX it's running, but if not, just click DirectX 10, 11, 12, and then check all on the first page here. Click OK, and then for the rest, just click OK and wait for it to download all of them. And once that's done, you should now see a reshade dash shaders folder under the Halo Master Chief Collection Win64 folder. Open that up, and then you want to open up the reshade GI beta file, like so, and you go to here, shaders and textures. Drag those over, overwrite anything that's in there. Also on the Discord, you'll be able to scroll up and find the quint dither.fx file. Uh, if not, somebody will be able to direct you towards it on the Discord. Go to quint folder within the shaders, drag that over, and there you go. Now we can fire up the game and we can see what it looks like with reshade ray tracing on. Alrighty, so once you're in the game, you just want to hit home and that will bring up the reshade menu. Uh, under search, you just want to type RTGI and that'll appear. Tick the box and it should activate nicely. I've got a pre-configured INI file here, so I'm going to select that. And let's dive right in and we'll take a look at some settings. So let's start off with a daytime level. Let's start off with uplift reserve on easy, just so it's easier to look around. And here we go. So here we are in the opening scene. This is with the enhanced settings on at 4K. I'm running a Core i7-6700K with 32 gigabytes of RAM and an RTX 20. 80. Let's get a nice little position here. Let's open up the menu. Let's enable some things. We can enable some extra lighting. There's a new option in the new RTGI release called Alternate Intersection Test. Tick that on as well. Everything else looks okay. Should be the same config that I used for Halo 2. So let's turn it on. And okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of extra lighting added there. The frame rate's gone quite far down. So if we have a look at the statistics here, we've gone down to about 60 FPS, we turn it off, and we go all the way back up to 98 FPS. So it's having quite a large impact on the frame rate there, but it's not too bad, we're still at 60 frames a second. It may dip below that as we go further on. So let's have a look in the lighting channel to see what's really going on here. So as you can see, you've got the shadows around the trees, the rocks here, you've got extra ambient occlusion around the grass, you've got light bouncing up onto these benches here. This all looks pretty good so far. It's adding quite a bit in. Um, let's see what that new option does. See if we can see any difference with alternate intersection test. Switch it off. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if that makes any difference to the frame rate. So it's 61 there. Let's turn it off. Uh, about a frame cost on that. So the description is it enables an alternate way to accept or reject ray hits. We'll remove halos around thin objects, but generate more illumination and shadows elsewhere. More accurate lighting, but less pronounced SSAO outline look. That makes the lighting more accurate. And yeah, you can see there it's making the SSAO a lot less pronounced. So we're going to leave that on. And uh, we've got bounce lighting at 6, ambient occlusion at 4, and the ray length is at 14. Now this is all configured for Halo 2 Remaster, so we're gonna tweak some of the options here. Under Path Tracing, let's see what ray length does. So, okay, yeah, definitely don't want it too far down. Right at the top end. So I think 14 was okay for that. Some games seem to handle that differently, but 14 seems okay for this. Number of rays, we'll leave it three. Um, amount of steps at per ray. Oh yeah, keep that up at 20. You can crank the amount of rays up and that will uh, make things look a bit better, but you'll start to get uh, diminishing returns and the frame rate will drop severely when you turn that up. So if I turn that up from three to like six, frame rate goes down to 44 frames a second. So 
And as you can see, it doesn't look that much better. So we'll leave it at three. Z thickness. Uh, this should prevent shadowing from the gun too far away. Yeah, you can see there's a bit of shadowing coming from the gun there when we turn it up. But if we turn it too low, it tends to cut away a lot. Put that up to 60. Ambient occlusion intensity. I've got fade out at the max. So that means the ray tracing is being applied as far as it possibly can be. Ambient occlusion is at 4. So if we turn that up. Ooh, that looks really nice. With the alternate intersection on, we turn it off. Looks a bit too strong, we turn it on. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. Even then, it probably is still a bit too strong. But it's not too bad. That actually looks really nice with that new option. So I'm going to put that at six. Alternate intersection seems to really calm that down and blend it really nicely. You can also see like there's a better shadow coming from those trees there. It's still not accurate because the way the shader works, it's all in screen space, so it can't tell the direction of light in game. It's just doing its best estimation. But still, that is pretty nice. Oh, we're seeing a bit of a shadow from the gun there as it moved around. Okay, might need to crank down that Z thickness a bit more then. I'll crank it down to 50 for now. Bounce lighting intensity. So it's way too bright up top. Mm. Let's put that to five. Now let's go over to the normal channel. So this is with the ray tracing on. And then with the ray tracing off. So as you can see, that's a lot of depth that's being added by the ray tracer back on. Lots of extra lighting, shadowing, shading, enhances the colors. Extra shading under the bench ears. The trees look better because of extra shading in them and shadowing around them. Really, really nice stuff. So, this is looking pretty good already. Oh yeah, look at that. It really feels like you're under sunlight. Maybe a bit too bright for the sun, but given that the sun's... Yeah, given the time of day and the way, where the sun is, that looks pretty good. What I've also noticed is that in ODST, the gun is actually further away from the screen, unlike what it was in Halo 3. If you've seen my previous video on what's wrong with the view models in Halo 3, you'll note that I said no matter what the FOV, the gun models are too squished up and close to the screen. On this, it appears to be greatly fixed so that the gun is actually being held further away. Kind of like what it was in the Halo 3 first flighting. So this looks really, really nice. I don't think that they have implemented the weapon offsets config yet. I have got a config file in there. I don't know if that's affecting this. It still doesn't affect Halo 3 because the guns in Halo 3 look the same. But in this, the guns look a lot better. So hopefully they backport that to Halo 3. Because in Halo 3, the guns just look way too squished up. But anyway, that's uh, a different topic for a different video. So let's move on. This with the ray tracing on. Let's turn it off while we're moving. And as you can see, it's just a lot flatter without it. It really, really enhances that look. And back on. I think it gives it a lot more natural lighting. I've overdone it with configs in the past, but I think I've got it right here and that it looks natural enough. And the shadowing looks really good as well. So let's check out a bit of Mombasa streets now and see how this looks. Alrighty, so here we are. Plenty of lighting around here, plenty of uh, darkness. This should look really good. First off, let's check out the lighting channel to see what's going on. Oh yeah, so you've got the lights from the police vehicle there shining away with a shadow underneath it. Oh, that's really, really nice. Also bouncing off of the gun there. Ooh, that's nice as well. That's really nice. Let's uh, let's again have a look at the new setting. Alternate intersection test. Let's switch it off. And then back on. Ooh, look in the distance there. That extra shading. Oh yeah, you can see that in the distance as I flick it on and off. So that alternate intersection test is definitely worth being kept on. So yeah, the weapon models look so much better in this than they did in Halo 3. I really, really hope they put those weapon positions into Halo 3 because that looks so nice compared to the squashed up weapons in Halo 3. So this is with the ray tracing on and then the ray tracing off. And then back on. 
So yeah, a lot of extra shadowing, lighting, really enhances the mood, I think. And again, the frame rate is still uh, above 60. Doesn't feel quite as uh, smooth. I think it's probably some odd frame times in there, but that's still pretty nice. So let's check out lighting channel again. Ooh, look at that detail, the glow from the fire up there. Nice muzzle flash from the gun there. The only trouble there is, of course, you can see the pink from the needles there impacting the ground. That's just a issue with how screen space works. That's not too noticeable, but it is interesting how you can see shadows being formed from it just over those handrails there. There may be a config around that. I'm not sure. There are ways to detect the UI as well to stop the UI reflecting. As you can see, that little golden bit in the middle is from the crosshair because it can't differentiate between a light source and a UI element. I still need to research a way to find a way around that. Oh, nice well lit area here. Let's check out what's going on in the lighting channel. Just look at that extra shadowing and lighting in the corners. The extra glow. Oh, God, it looks so good. Shadowing behind the benches there. That's with the ray tracing on. And then off. And then back on. Oh, it's so nice. Makes the scene look so much more dynamic. Much more well lit and shaded. Okay, let's, let's move on to another level where we can hopefully show off a bit more of the lighting and shadowing. So let's check out some Kikawani Station. So another nighttime level, but uh, there's a lot more going on. Should be some more enemies and stuff around. Let's check out the lighting channels. So the lighting is so detailed. And there's so much going on, you can pretty much play it in the lighting channel if you wanted. But we're not going to do that. We're going to flick back to normal. So the great thing about the shader is that it just adds a lot of more dynamic shadowing and lighting in where the original engine just couldn't really add it in. Of course, due to limitations of the time. But just being able to add that in with a shader that just runs over the top is really, really good. So if we have a look at this area with the RT on and then switch it off. Much more subtle in the dark areas, but you can still see the lighting overall is toned down to what you'd expect. The extra shadowing under bodies and objects there, and it just makes it look quite a lot more natural. Like, the lighting reflecting off of that grunt there looks a little bit too bright for the location he's in. But when you flick the RT on, it seems to blend a lot better. So, let's have a look at another area. So here we are, right in the middle of a big battle scene, and the frame rate still seems to be pretty smooth. I don't think it's really going to dip below 60 that much. Obviously results will vary, but I think if you're running at 1080p with a relatively decent card, I think you'll be alright. And I did worry that the film grain effect, which is quite strong on this game, would affect the, the shader, but it doesn't, as far as I can see. Which is good. So if we just have a little overlook at this area here. With the ray tracing on. And then switch it off. And then back on. Yeah. Really makes that lighting look a lot better. Looks a lot more like sunlight. Okay, so this should be a cool area to look at. So let's go over to the lighting channel, see what's going on behind the scenes. And yeah, there's lots of extra shadowing, shading. So there's kind of these uh, artificial sort of real-time shadows. So you can see there's a shadow behind that. But the shadow moves as you go around it. Because like I said, it's all in screen space. So it can't determine actual light direction within the game engine. It still looks pretty good. It still looks pretty serviceable, especially when you go to the actual in-game graphics like so. And then you switch it off. And then back on. Just gives it a lot of extra depth. So let's have a look at the data hive. Oh yeah, so this area here. Let's get the old lighting channel back up. Ooh, you can see lots and lots of shadowing there. And the pipes up there, nicely occluded lighting. Shadows under the body there. These random bits of items here. Bits of blue from those servers there. And then when we go over to the normal lighting. So this with the RT on. And the RT off. Oh, wow, yeah. Look at that. Then back on. That looks way better. The lighting seems more diffuse as well, where it should be as well, which is really, really good. 
So let's have a look at the lightning channel. I just want to see how the... Oh, the jackal shields. Look how much they're illuminating the jackals in the ground there as well. Oh, that's really nice. It's also illuminating walls too far behind them, but again... That is just the limitation of the uh, shader. That is really nice. All the extra colouring and stuff. All the extra lighting. Let's turn the effect off. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, and then back on. Really enhances those red areas there under the archways. And there's been no frame buffer issues or anything like that. No weird ghosting issues beyond like the UI or anything like that. Because you're always going to get slight artifacting through the UI here. But that's not really a big deal. So here we are in an area where there's very little lighting. So let's see how the RTGI is handling this. Let's go to the lighting channel. So that is really nicely adding in a lot of shadowing there. You're not really seeing it because obviously the lighting is so low. But it's still handling it quite well. And this is the RT on. And the RT off. So it does actually make it a little bit darker, a little bit more atmospheric, but not too darker. And it also brings that lighting under control in a really nice way. It actually reduces that sort of overbloom. That was a uh, effect that was quite prevalent in the 2000s, uh, mid to late 2000s was bloom. Kind of takes that bloom under control a bit. So I think overall that looks pretty damn good. Okay, so I'm going to try out one last level, and that is the final level of the game. So let's dive into that. Okie dokie, so here we are, we've got some interesting effects on the characters. Let's go to here, and let's see what's going on in the lighting channel. Ooh, yeah, so you can see on the characters' hands there, you can see where the lighting is sort of uh, being picked up by the RTGI shader there. That looks really cool, and a bit reflecting off the gun there as well. Let's turn the RT effect off. And then back on. Oh, especially those, uh, that bit under there is much better shaded. Again, the frame rate's pretty smooth. See here that even the shading is being applied to the actual gun itself. So when you switch it on, you can see there's extra shadowing in there, crevices on the gun, and just makes the whole model look a, a little less sort of 2000s shiny and a little bit more like actual metal. Which I think looks really good. You can see it's added in shadowing under there. These little bits here. And that's off. And that's back on. It's a subtle effect. It gives it quite a bit of a visual boost. It looks really, really good. Okie dokie. Let's jump on the Warthog here. Oh, this is a nice scene here. Oh, yes. This is a nice scene. Here's where I get my thumbnail. That looks really nice. Let's turn the RT off. And then back on. Yeah, look at that. There's also some lighting coming from along the sides here somewhere. Ah, it's from those lights there. Oh, that's nice. I mean, this looks beautiful without the RT, but with it. Wow. I'm actually kind of awestruck by how amazing that looks. And there is my thumbnail. Whoa! Alrighty, so that is how you get ray tracing on Halo 3 ODST for PC. The game is out now, so you can go into the link in the description. You can buy it either from Steam or on the Microsoft Store. You can only get the ray tracing on PC. I think it looks really, really good, runs really, really smoothly, and I think if you can, you should definitely run it with ray tracing because, my god, it looks beautiful. And really enhances the game. So, thanks for watching. Do let me know what you think. Drop a like. Do subscribe. Hit the little bell. It really helps. Hope you're staying safe. And I'll see you in the next one.